Do you know what I haven't done me? <laughs> so, hi, good evening. <clears throat> Welcome to the IBD and Ostomy Support Show. I'm Louise, aka Crohn's Fighting. Sorry if you caught the back end of that. We've all been running a little bit late this evening. Uh, time run away with all of us. Um, so, tonight, along with today being um, International Women Day, um, yay us. Um, we tonight topics we are covering. We are doing everything that is within barrier cream, sprays, wipes. So anything that is a barrier for your stoma, we're covering tonight. Most of us have got products. If we do use them with us to go through them, we'll also be doing hit and miss and whether or not we like certain things because we've tried a few. Um, we're also covering mindful eating um, with your stoma, uh, more so with an ileostomy. The reason being is we're seeing an increased amount of people at the moment on the groups that are getting blockages maybe that they shouldn't have got. Um, <clears throat> it's a bit it's a bit of a difficult one because we're not saying to you, oh, you shouldn't be eating this, you shouldn't be doing that. It, it's not that. It's just about mindful eating and just not causing yourself unnecessary pain because of something that you've eaten and you know you shouldn't have eaten it, but you ate it anyway. Um, so what have I been doing this week? Well, yesterday I spent three hours in the hairdresser's chair. I was only meant to go in for a wash, cut and blow dry and I got in there and I was like, hmm, do you know what? Do you want to colour it for me? Um, my scalp's a little bit tender, but I've pretty much gone white blonde. Uh, I've had work, I've had phone calls, um, my little girl had a book day today, so, well, re rearranged book day today, so she, she'd she gone in dressed as Dorothy. She even put lipstick on this morning, so I think there might be a boy on the cards, so there best not be, because mummy would be after him. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's not even funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've booked in for the opticians to go for a quick referral through to ophthalmolog an ophthalmologist after speaking with Nat because the GPs keep giving me antihistamines for my eyes and they're not covering it. Um, and I keep getting pain and floaty bits in one, so I need to go and get that checked. Uh, what else am I doing? Oh, uh, yes, I'm... Floaty bits. Yeah, floaty right. bits. Um, I am getting back on the road. Um, I got hit by a drunk driver back in 14 or 15, completely wrote my car off and I had Maisie in the back and I've not really been the most confident of driver's seats. Let's just put it this way, I hit, I hit the dual carriageway and I absolutely poo my pants. So um, I am going back for confidence lessons and I'm going to retake my test. If I fail it, I've got my original driving license. So it's not too much of an issue, but I just I just need that um, confidence boost just to get back on the road. And now I'm traveling more. It might make life a bit easier. It might actually save me money for driver. So yay me. Um, going out tomorrow night for drinkies. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, so we might be covering ostomies and alcohol at some point if I have a bad experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's about it for me this week. I'm just very tired and I'm just looking forward to a chill out day tomorrow once I've done the school run because I have no work tomorrow. Yay. So I'll pass you over to Nat. Hi, good evening. I'm Natalie AK, the Spoon Mummy. Um, I apologise in advance. I feel rubbish and really, really need my bed, so I might be a bit quiet. Um, I've had a manic week again. Um, we had Layla at the weekend, which was really lovely. Um, and then I had hospital on Monday, which I wasn't overly worried about beforehand, but then as it got to the day, I think I'd worked myself up a little bit about what, what was going to happen and what was going to be said. Um, I was in hospital, ended up with a locked knee again. So I ended up staying in until they could get me into theatre and get it straightened out. Um, and it was a follow-up from that with my orthopaedic surgeon. Um, but basically, it's happened now, I think, about six or seven times in the last five years. Um, so my feeling is that something needs to now be done about it. And we have spoken before about needing a knee replacement. Um, but obviously, we want to put that off as long as we can. But I'm at the point now, I just need something fixing because I can't keep having it locking. Um, this time it wasn't even that I was sort of normally it happens when I'm kneeling on it or putting some kind of weight on it and it's bent and then I can't straighten it once I get up um, this time it wasn't even like that um, so it's obviously getting worse since it has been locked I've just been in constant pain with it now it feels really really weak and like it could lock again if I'm if I'm not too careful with it so I'm being really really cautious does it and lock now, straight? no it locks well Always locked Always bent, bent, never locked yeah. in the straight. It's locked straight once, but I got that out. I think that was just my arthritis because my arthritis can like lock my joints. But I can get it out. 
Whereas this, he thinks, although it is to do with myothritis and obviously like the degeneration of the joint, it's more of a mechanical problem. So he thinks there might be some bits of bone or a bit of cartilage or something that's a bit loose. Um, he really still does not want to do the knee replacement. But I have said to him, at the moment, I think the quality of life I've got with my knee, even though the knee replacement wouldn't be fantastic. I've, I've, I've had my hip done and that's been great ever since. And this, his worry is that I will hope it's as good as that and knee replacements just never are as good as that. They're a lot, lot harder to get over and stuff. So um, that's his concern. Um, how and many times has, sorry now, how many times has your knee locked in the last year? Uh, twice now. So, oh, it's just over a year because the last time it happened, I was up at Steeze in Halifax as well. So then I ended up in Halifax Hospital getting transferred to Huddersfield because that's where their um, orthopaedic bit is. So that in itself was a whole nightmare because obviously I'm in hospitals I don't know. Steve doesn't drive either, so it wasn't easy for him to even get to see me, never mind anybody else. But um but yeah, it's just it's just not nice. I can't go to the play centres with the kids anymore. I can't go in and play with them properly because I can't be crawling about on that knee because it's just if it locks again, I'm just starved. It's not, especially if you're stuck in a kiddies play centre as well, where they're all chucking ball yeah, at you. It happened when I was in the park with the boys, and at the time I think Riley was only about two. Um, I'd got him in the push chair, and obviously Leo was five. If my sister-in-law happened to come over the park with her two kids, so she was able to take the boys, but they had to wheelchair lift me off the bloody park. It was mortifying because it was half term as well, so that's why we were all down at the park. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just I can't. I just can't carry on like this, but he's going to do an MRI, which is getting me in quite quickly for to see what's going on in there at the minute. And then I'm going to see him again and he's hoping to do an arthroscope, which is like a camera and that in keyhole into my knee to have a look around and hopefully clear any crap out that's in there that will stop this from happening. So we'll just... He sounds like he's pretty on the ball, so... He is. He's fantastic. Yeah. When I got admitted on the, I saw him last year when I first moved to Derby. I was referred to him just about the knee to see what he wants to do. And his opinion at the time was, we'll leave it and see what happens. And um, I got admitted like late the Thursday night. On the Friday, the doctor off the, the orthopedic doctor came to see me from the ward and um, had a chat to him. And then all of a sudden he appeared and um, he was like, I saw your name on the board. I told you to come back when I was bored because you're such an interesting case. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, we need to try this, we need to try that. And I want to look at your knee because he'd obviously never seen it actually physically locked before. He'd seen sort of a few x-rays and bits and bobs, but that was it. But um, so he had a look and, and then it was actually him that managed to get me into theatre on the Saturday to get it unlocked, bless him. And then he even came in on the Sunday on his day off to check on me and to get me sorted so I could go home. He, nice. he is fantastic and he brought his daughter bless him and i forgot to ask her she was she had a full leg splint on like me apparently she'd hurt her leg the week oh, before <laughs> um but she was only about 10 or 11 bless her but um he dragged her in as well so she had to come and see me but um i think it was a bit of a what's it apparently she'd been looking at her mobile phone walking along the path so i think she was getting a taste like look this is kind of what happens if you do that when you're older although obviously it's not my fault but <laughs> but no so yeah i've got i think i've got myself worked up a bit i'm gl really glad i took my mum as well because i'd obviously spoken to her about how i was feeling about it all and um when i spoke to him about it i started getting quite upset and i was like i really don't want to cry but she was there and able to sort of explain to him how i felt and and that which was really good that's what mummy's um, good at yeah, but I, like I say, he's lovely. He really is, and I feel really confident with him as my doctor and everything. So we'll see anyway. But then that's good. Tuesday. Oh no, that was Tuesday. My I'm getting all confused with my days. Wednesday, I was doing my good deed, taking Steve to hospital for his methotrexate injection, and uh, we ended up on a closed motor. 
and we ended up being there all day. What was that? So I missed that then. It went all went quiet at my end. Yeah, oh, your Wi-Fi's so, going up now. <laughs> I think because you guys keep it, pausing, but, but you're not. It, it went. Not too where was you? Where did you go? Because I'm missing the interesting bit there. I know it was a closed <laughs> motorway, and she was sat on it for yeah, the best part yeah, of three hours. <laughs> so we were stuck, and yeah. So my my good deed, I kind of ended up having to really hold my patience with it and um yeah so we were then out all day um and then today we've all papered we've done like a feature wall in our bedroom so we've done that but then i got onto tizy and sorting and so it's just been like go 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 and it's really hit me so now i'm like oh. <laughs> so yeah but um busy but i'm doing okay oh i had my results from my flexi as well oh, what were the results from your flexi though um it obviously, when I had it, it showed um, hemorrhaging proctitis. Um, he tried to get it. It was absolutely hellishly painful. I did write a post about it, and I don't want to put people off because I've had a flexi before with no sedation, and it was absolutely fine. This time I had sedation, and they used a child scope because I've got some already got some sort of narrowings and stuff down there, some strictures. Um, but it was awful. But literally, the whole lot was just. Um, inflamed and bleeding and he tried to get a little bit further up um so into like the start of the small bowel, uh, the large bowel sorry and um although he couldn't see any inflammation he said it was oozing blood still there so they obviously took some biopsies and they've confirmed um inflammation from the biopsies as well so oh. the plan is to do stellara eight weekly instead because i've been putting it by the rheumatologist their plan is 12 weekly when you have it for arthritis but ibd plan is eight weekly so my ibd doctor wants to get that bumped up to eight weekly um and she's talked possibly about enemas but she said she's going to get me back asap to sort of start sorting that out so there. Yeah. So well, the other option is, is if they're worried about your small bowel, they can always do um, a gastroscopy, which they knock you out for anyway. You'll never be lucid having that done. So. Hmm. Yeah. So we'll see, but um, but no. So it's not great, but it's getting sorted. So. But I'll pass you on to Steve. Anyway, <laughs> now I've not had for ages. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve. Hashtag Bag Daddy. Um, <laughs> My week. Well, firstly, I'd like to say uh, hi to Rachel. Sorry I upset you, babe. And it's, she's not very well in hospital. I uh, hope you get better soon. Um, my week, it's been... Uh, I did my boxing. Mm -hmm. I, did my, I came second. She's not third, you know what I mean? But uh, it was good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I had a few people come and see me. Uh, I don't think I made a complete fool of myself. Uh, that went that went all right. Last you did. About I twenty was... seconds before yeah. the end of the fight, I got stopped. I was I stopped him with my nose. I stopped. I stopped. I kept hitting. Don't. Ben was going with my nose. Ben was going to me on Saturday. He's going. I'm uh, getting videos. Does you want to watch it? I was like, I don't want to watch him get me <laughs> up. Uh, yeah, is that it? Was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, broke my nose. Hurt my arm. But uh, apart from that, it's it's a chance to chance to sort of do it all again for one time. You know what I mean? Yeah. How are your bruises just, doing? Just yeah, the bruises are good. The arms arms working again. It's just it's all. Say, what happened? I had a big black bruise there. It's kind of people had said I'd torn my bicep, but to be honest, th there's movement there. I think it's just a pull on the ligaments. You know, and it just obviously it bruised under the skin. My nose is sore. More than anything, what hurt more than anything is that about two weeks ago, I uh, I lost a filling out of my tooth. Now during the during the fight, I bit my tongue. So and obviously you got a gum shield on the top on your top teeth. When I took the gum shield out, the, the my bitten tongue kept scratching against my sharp tooth, and it mm. kept going into the socket like a vacuum. Mm. So that was really painful. But that that's that's about as painful as it got. To be fair, I enjoyed it. It was a good laugh. Earned a bit of money for charity, and, uh, and and that's it really. I'm just about collecting now. I'm about about six. I, I got about three or three and a half hundred pounds to collect. Oh, that's actually that's, that's like uh, I think it was um one thousand and one thousand one hundred and twenty or something like that. Well, 
No, 1,068. But 1,048 is going to be doubled by my work. So uh, just waiting on them to contact Lauren. That's brilliant. That's really yeah, good. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? You know well what I mean? Done. My next charity event won't be as strenuous as that, I'll tell you. No, you're going to have, be having lovely ladies walking down on either side of you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> Oh, the catwalk, by the way. the catwalk event, um, and they're now down to £10 per person or 2 for 15 So if you want to go, grab your tickets now. They're on offer, and there's only a few left. So I, know. Exactly. I actually messaged Paige privately, and I was like, is it okay if I bring Maisie? <laughs> oh. Yeah, Paige, come to the fight. Paige, come with yeah. her dad. I was watching some of Paige's stuff that she was post. Was it Paige's video that I watched first? I believe, I tell you what, I told everyone, I said, look, I don't know lives. And I think everyone posted it live. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. You got, nobody listens to me. No, you no did. Lacey was there. proud, lovely. Who's just had her baby, by the way? It's beautiful. Who? Stacey's had a baby. Has she had it, has she? Yeah, oh, she wicked. Wicked. Yes. Today, I think it was. They're home today, though, so. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. But I know quite a few people had said, like, don't get too excited because it's Steve's <laughs> boxing. But, she um, said she weren't going to miss it. Yeah. She weren't going to miss it. She's going to hold her legs closed. <laughs> she said, <laughs> like, so, wait until I've seen this. And she said, then I'm not bothered. <laughs> no, it's good. So that's pretty much been my week. Um, missing, missing Rachel. Hurry up and get out of hospital, girl. Um, that's pretty much it, I think, really. Tonight's subject is... Barrier rings, barrier creams, Bar barrier powders, and how not to eat bean sprouts like Steve and get a nice big ostomy <laughs> and paste it on Facebook. <laughs> you know what? I haven't eaten them since, you know. And yet nuts, yet nuts. I'm back on the nuts. I think I think you just gotta have a drink in between mouthfuls. That's what you gotta do. Yes, that's what I do with popcorn. Yeah, I can eat popcorn. I, I don't like nuts, so apart from a Snickers bar, but I definitely can't eat those because I gave myself a blockage with a Snickers. <laughs> but um, but popcorn I can eat as long as I chew really really good and drink a lot. So Steve, do you use barrier products at all? Do you use any kind of barrier product? I I have done in the past. I don't at the moment. I, I'm quite happy with with what I use, my bag wise, um, I have used, I've, I've, my main one that I used to use was Brava Barrier Cream. I've, I've used these, um, these trio, them are like samples they are that I've got, I've got a different. How do you find the barrier sprays or is that just, or is that the adhesive remover? You know, um, this, no, this is the, uh, this is the um, barrier spray. I've only used it a few times, you know, when I've when I've had soreness. But what I found out really is that my my soreness is caused by leaving on the bag too long, and that's it. Once I once I sort of I don't know, let's just say it's been on for four days, I'll start to get a bit sore. So I'll just do three days, and it's absolutely fine. I found the barrier creams really didn't didn't benefit me that much. To be fair, this is the one I use. Um. I don't know. I can't see myself, so I don't know whether you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Convitex Alice. Um, I did use the trio one before, actually. I used the wipes, um, but I was just saying to Louise, I found that when my skin flared up, they weren't working very well. And I think it was just a happy coincidence that the whole time I've been using them, my skin was okay. Yeah, I, I found that it really exacerbated my contact dermatitis because I tried it for about a month before I actually rang up, respond and begged for the Asterocrine because I've been using the samples. But I found that it aggravated, it, I found that it aggravated the site. However, I can confirm for those of you that have babies, it is really good for preventing nappy rash. Nappy and rash. We used it on Layla's bottom. She's teething, so she gets really sore. We use this and literally it is, I mean, the best thing I've ever found for babies' bums is metanium. So when they're really sore, you put some of that on. But this is fantastic. The best thing, a little wife, a little midwife, a little Chinese midwife, when, when um, I think we had our first child, the, the baby had really bad nappy rash. I mean, it was like four or five layers that had gone through. 
and she suggested <laughs> e- egg whites. Egg whites, yeah. And I tell you what, I tell you what. A day later, the, the skin had grown back. It was just amazing, absolutely amazing. Just whipped it up into a foam, applied the foam, and let the baby sort of lie there for a bit, you know, with fresh air. I mean, I have heard as well. I was um, the the wipes that I used to use. Obviously, I've moved to this. So this is what Steve had. So I just tried it, and it works amazingly well. I've just not had any problems with it. Um, but also, the other problem with the wipes is because of the actual contact with the skin, less hygienic, and obviously can spread problems and whatnot. Because do you know what I mean? Whereas this, you spray in and nothing's touching it. With a wipe, you're wiping that all around. Um, it was actually Shell. I'm sure it was Shell that mentioned it somewhere, and I don't, I've not thought about that. But I can see a point if it's something you've got. Especially people can get thrush and things, can't they, under their bags? Um, yeah. So yeah, that you could actually spread further if you're using the wipe. So it's just something to be aware of. But um, but I I have found the sprays are always better than the wipe. I'll tell you another clever thing for for the uh, sprays as well. And and Kelly show show me this one. I had a cut on my head, and uh, and from shaving, and I'd like scratched the scab off or something, and uh, she sprayed like it like put a barrier over the spray, stopped it bleeding. It's mm. absolutely perfect, like almost like a like a rubber cap over the over the uh, the cut, which is clever. Well, I should have tried that on my finger. I cut my finger the other day. Yeah, have a try. And, um, it just would not stop bleeding. I went through. He was packing it with bloody, and it was. It wasn't a massive. I mean, it was big enough. I'd cut like a big chunk of skin off, but it still wasn't massive. But Steve was packing it with. Well, I don't know whether it would work a big cut. I'm just just going to ask an interesting question, actually. If your stoma site is completely healthy, and say somebody said to you, "We'll use a barrier spray to protect it," would you agree that just leaving it alone, if your skin's fine and your skin is healthy, then to just not touch it? Uh, yeah, I th- I'm a big believer. If, it, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah, because it's pointless, it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's it's not that. There's there's been an increase at the moment. I know people have been saying, especially with healthy stoma sites, that they're having products pushed onto them or being recommended products, even though their stoma site is healthy. Because Graham's one of them. He's been recommended to go onto Cavalon spray, but there's nothing wrong with his stoma site. His skin's I mean. healthy. If you've got a hat that stops the yeah. rain getting to your head. Why put an extra hat on your hat? It's pointless. You're just going to ruin the look of your hat, aren't you? Well, it's like I suffer with. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, (laughs) I suffer with contact dermatitis, and because my my ileostomy output is as high as what it is, it eats away the base plate. I can tell you, any bag that I've tried, even the one that I use now, um, even though the bags are lasting me three days, come to, at day three, I've got to take it off because I can feel the itching from around the stoma site. Uh-huh. So um, it it doesn't matter how small or how concise I cut my base, um, <clears throat> stuff still gets underneath it. So I've always got a red ring on the droopy side of my ileostomy. So not on the side that's got the loop on, but on the side where... Mine, mine's like a drunk st- mine's like a drunk heliostomy it sort of droops to one side. <laughs> I won't make any crude references because I know you're thinking it that <laughs> but um, so yeah the way the way it sits so of course when the output comes out because of the way my heliostomy sits in the bag anyway it's just like a constant red ring and it's painful I, I don't think I think the reason why we're doing about barry creams is I don't think anybody realizes just how painful that area gets in your skin gets if it's massacred it's just not good because what can take like two weeks to heal can only be caused in a matter of hours of your bag leaking <laughs> with it eating away at the skin <clears throat> so i use the crusting method which i learned from shell because she posted a video about the crusting i know yeah. shell doesn't use berries but i know she uses the brother powder so what i do to keep it at bay i use the i use the astor all around my ileostomy but i also use it all around to where the base plate sticks as well because it just i find that it keeps the skin healthy and it it stops with the skin stripping because there's a barrier between the adhesive and the skin and the fact that i'm using the vitamin e i found that it doesn't it, i've not got the contact dermatitis anymore my stoma site's healthy apart from the red ring so i use the barrier cream which stops it breaking down even more and then i put the brava powder on <clears throat> however tips with the brava powder don't go gung-ho with it little goes a long way because if you put too much on the bag won't stick (laughs) 
<laughs> I like that. Do you rub it in afterwards or do you oh, just sort of that pat it, puff it on? Oh my yeah. Pat it off, don't you? What I do is I squirt it out around the red bit and I pat it in with a tissue once I've put the Estero cream on. And then what I do, if, if it's coming off, because what it does is it sucks up the moisture from the sore skin and it, it, it sort of absorbs it and it falls off. So what you do is you have to work at it for a couple of minutes and just put on a little bit and a little bit and a little bit until it until it's dry. And you can't see, you, it's, you, you, you see the ring, you see the ring of the powder, but you can't feel it. Yes, yeah. it's, 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 I've it's, got that too. Yeah. I had the smallest one. About that yeah. beat it was, and, and I, I squirted it, and I, I think half of it come out in one go. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> poof, it's like tugboat. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But, so, yeah, um, with the, but the, yeah, the, the Brava powder, I have to admit, I haven't found a powder uh, to, to match up with it. It's fantastic. Yeah. I only use mine if my skin is um, sore and, and it's getting wet. Because I find that my spray alone, if any sore bits that will tackle that but if it's wet this also dries it out so it helps your bag stick um as well as obviously helping it heal but yeah so my powders last me ages they're always like do you need all the powder i'm like no do you <laughs> so know what i think i've had well i somebody sent me a bottle that wasn't quite full and i had got one bottle from a stoma nurse and i've never ordered it since I'm still using those. Um, do, do you know what? I go through one of these powders, but I think because of how often I was changing my bag before I changed my prescription over in January, I was changing my bag every day, so I was having to use it every day because I've always got that ring. It doesn't matter how concise the bag is cut, how correct it is, it still gets underneath. But I can't use the barrier rings. Now, no. if, if anybody I, wants I, to... I, I could use them. I could. But I always, I always used to... Sorry, I always used to cut them to the size of my bag and stick them to the bag rather than stick them to my skin. So I couldn't get it. it was you that said that. I knew somebody had told me they stuck it to the bag, not their skin, which was easier. For those it's of so you... much easier. and Because and it, it, I found when I stuck it to my skin, it was kind of like uh, I was forever tightening it. Mm. What was that face for, Louise? What, what have you done? You look like you're trodding. So... <laughs> it's what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, don't... I was... I was hunting for barrier rings because I, I used to use them when they when they, um, I had the first um, pelican the, the pelican contour bag. I was using the barrier rings underneath. I was using the 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 Ekin Ekin seals the the cohesive ones. They're fantastic. They are so thin and so moldable, and they don't, they don't rip apart. You don't have to rip them apart. You can get them around the stoma without having to sort of do a bodge job. But the only ones that I could find, because I don't use them anymore, so I stopped ordering them, the only ones that I could find were samples that I had from um, Trio. Now, personally for me, I don't like them. I tried them whilst I was on holiday last year. They stick to your fingers, but they don't stick to the somastite. And it's not moldable, because look, yeah. you put it, it's just so wide. And, you know, it takes you two or three attempts and, you know, to the point of where you've actually massacred one or two of them yeah. to, to try and get it around the stoma site. But I think for, for those of you that are using convex bags or, or even flat bags and you are suffering with leaks or you do have sore stoma site and you don't use the barrier creams and you don't use the powders, then the, the barrier rings are the next best thing to protect your skin from any output should it, it come out underneath the bag. I mean, do you guys use them? I didn't get on with the rings. I found that I leaked underneath them and just couldn't get them right and it wasn't comfortable. So I used the Brava protective sheets. Um, oh, now I've never seen them, you know, I've heard about them. Yeah, these were real. I don't use them anymore because the new salts bags that I use, I don't need them underneath now, can I, Would you explain how, how they work? Because yeah. you're talking to a, a newbie here with, with them. So this one is the biggest size. They come in three sizes, but I got the biggest sizes because I found that I could split this into six to use it. And then what I'd do is my little, say my little piece right here, I'd cut up and cut... Lift it up a bit, lift it up, just can't. Oh. Yeah. So I'd cut up a little bit and cut my stoma out. Um, and then you take the... It's basically like a really thin... I don't know whether you've seen... Let me get one of these out. If you've seen the trio... Um, Yes. These things. These are like really thin when you take both sides of the, the sticky off. They're okay, really... so you, you cut your stoma circle out and you... Yeah. And then literally you just pop it round. So it's like a barrier ring, but um, once you take the other side of it off, because you sort of take... 
Let me just crack this one. Does it does it adhere to your skin well? It adheres really, really well and just protects right around the stone because I Ooh. used to get a lot of that red ring um as well. So you like take it off and you take both sides off. And it's just this really thin, flexible, like I just found it a lot thinner than you get the rings. And it's yeah, more flexible, yeah. so it's more comfortable. Can you see like how thin it is? Uh, yeah, I remember you saying to me about trying that ages ago, but the problem that problems that I have with the adhesives, I didn't know if it was worth me playing mine. roulette and trying it. Yeah. I mean I've got some. I've got because I've obviously don't use them all. I don't order them anymore, but I've got some just left just in case I needed them. But I could send you a couple to try anyway. Oh, I might have to get that yeah. if my skin gets really bad. Yeah. But I I did a video as well on my YouTube channel um about how I use them. So I like um, the look of them. So I don't know. <laughs> I I, I've but, I've used um, barrier rings with previous bags all the time, all the time, and I found they were brilliant. That they they made the bag last a lot longer. Yeah, they protected I mean, my think, skin. Because have, have any of you got? Sorry, have any of you got? Are they what are they called granuloma? Is it granulomas? Granulomas, you know, like the little little the granulation. Yeah, no, that's what it's called. Is that yeah. through stitching? Is that through like? Oh, you through. mean you mean granulomas? You mean the scar tissue? I'm not sure. You know, like your stoma is round, so and then they have like little bubbles of skin around it. Do you, yeah, do you know what I mean? Can, that can sometimes be caused if the stitches have been left in too long. If the stitches have been left in too long, then the skin's raised and it's puckered. However, most stoma nurses, I believe, and I know that they did this with me after I'd had my stitches removed, is they actually used nitrate around the site to to burn off the scar tissue. Okay. Just so never... skin would grow back normal. Mm. And believe it or not, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, I've had I mean it's judge. Um it's actually got a little bit better with whatever they've finally just given him, but they've said they're gonna have to cauterize it or whatever they do if um if it doesn't sort itself out. Yeah, it's normally um, it's normally blah, 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 they normally use uh, silver nitrate, um, silver nitrate which it. is like a it's like a little stick which they crack. It's like a match, and they just they they just rub it rub it on the skin. Um, sorry, the amount of abscesses that I've had opened up and I've had to have my scrape back down to literally bare bare minimum of tissue. I've been through the silver nitrate process more times than I care to remember. So it's like a walk in the park now to be fair. Uh -huh. Um, so no, they can do that, but if you're having your op and if they are reciting your stoma, then there's a possibility that that could, that would go away, but you might get left with a bit of a bumpy raised scar, Steve, if they do that. Right. Okay. See, so, yeah, yeah my, 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 obviously my stoma is going to be on the left hand side now. Would that be stretched? Would they actually stretch what's left of my, uh, the, the, so obviously it's my it's an ileostomy it's my ileum yeah. would, would they create would they use uh how can i put it my stoma that i've got now or would they shorten it and move it, it over I purely love that depends on if you've got strictures scar tissue adhesions it you, you can't tell or predict that until they've opened you up but i'll, I'll be yeah. honest with you because when I go in for my surgeries, they don't know what they're going to find until they go in there. It's why I've lost as much small bowel as what I have. Because every time they've gone in there, it's a did. They've tried to get it off. It's split, so they've had to take more off to 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 form. So right, it's, okay. It's a bit of a dicey one because they, to, to be honest, it, it's it's like a house of cards. You know, you take one out in the in the right place and it'll stand up. Whereas another one, if you pull it out, yeah. it, it'll fall. So, so I've looked at diagrams of how how they're done and that, but. I couldn't. I couldn't watch an operation or a procedure. That no, oh, no. Oh, I would. I'm just. Yeah, saying. yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah I'd, I'd really like. I'd like to know how it's done, but I'd like someone to draw it rather than actually see. It. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm a bit tickled stomach like that. Uh, what's that to you? It's a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, the other one that I do have, um, apart from the, the trio wipes, the sting-free barrier wipes, which, to be honest, I use on Cadence's bottom when she's here, when she's got nappy rash, because she's always bloody teething. Um, um, I've tried this. Personally, I can't get on with it. I thought it was, it was a good alternative from barrier rings. It's that silken from trio. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you can see, 
but it, it, it comes it, it comes in a tube like this. These are just the testers, so I can't guarantee if the actual real life full version size comes like this, but I can probably pretty much guarantee that it does. Uh, the, the hole that it comes out of, you have to pierce it. It's got like this funny like silver thing. You know the, the caps like you get on the tomato sauce bottle and it's impossible to get it off to put the lid back on. It's a bit like that. So the only way that you can do it, they advised me to stick a pin through it and squeeze it out. But the thing is, because of the way that it comes out and because of what it is, it sets quite quickly. So you have to get a load of it out. And the best way to apply it is to do it with a cotton bud. Don't just stick it round and, and go round because you're just going to end up with a massive, great big lump. Of whatever well, that's like a, like, a glue, of. like a glue barrier, is it, sort of thing? It, it's, it's, it's an alternative to a barrier ring. Okay. So instead that's... of a barrier ring, you put this around your stoma. So you put enough to cover whatever the soreness is and enough to cover, obviously, the hole, for the, the hole and the base plate for the bag. So, so you could you... almost, like, fill a gap with it. I wouldn't say, f you, do you know what, you could, but the thing is, and what I will say is this doesn't stick to the skin. So, you know, when you take the bag off, it comes off with the bag. I'm, right, I'm right. sorry, I'm like a mad scientist. I know I have bad skin, but I play silly buggers with stuff. I, I'm just curious to see if it works. But, I mean, it might work for some people. I think with me, I'm just naff trying to use barrier rings or anything that sort of involves a bit of finesse in getting it around the skin. And getting it around the stoma site without getting it everywhere else. I'm one of those girls where you could put me in a room, tell me not to touch the paint, and I'd somehow still walk out with paint on me, even though I hadn't touched it. So, um, I, I don't know. It's it's a difficult one because I mean, from your guys' experience of using barrier rings, what would you say was was the best one for you if if you have used them? The protective sheets rather than the rings. I like the look of them. I would say, personally, just from use alone, would be the the. Uh, oh, I can't think what make they are. Obviously, um, I have I have a charter. It would be the little the little um, rings like that. Was it the Eakin ones that you was using? That they, yes, it was. Really yes, cool yes. Pack. They're really good. Those are. They, yeah, they, they are. They're, 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 is, is it called the cohesive seal? They, they are. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had the big ones as well, but they were just too big. I mean, they were like record players. You, you could fit your whole bag onto it. Mm. You ended up wasting loads. And, you know, your bag would be about four inches off your skin. This is right. I really need to it's turn my best. messenger up when I'm on the when I'm on the show. <laughs> Graham's just messaged me right and said apparently if you spark 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 a match or something near your stomach, you're fine. However, if the bag's off. And the stoma goes off it could actually cause an explosion <laughs> i don't know where it gets this stuff from really <laughs> uh, well, oh dear but he's got no. too much time on his hands <laughs> but no i agree i've tried a few barrier rings i tried the hollister ones um oh god you have to stick them on a radiator and everything to mold them and your fingers stick to them it's like super glue this is it speed is the element though isn't it you don't want to spend too long in the bathroom i mean no, that but when you've got to heat the seat, when you've got to heat the ring up on the mic uh, on on the radiator for ten minutes just to make it a bit mouldable, it's sort of defeating the object of a quick yeah. package, really, isn't it? Um, I found the Eakin ones to be fair, the, the best ones that I've tried. Um, the the trio uh, is uh, not worth that. With yeah, the trio, the, the trio really uh, nailed it with the uh, the attractiveness of their products. You know, they actually look lovely. You know, all the all the tins and that, they're all really nice colours. And Well, I think me and Jasmine were saying at the last thing that we went to, and I think somebody else said it as well, that it reminds you of um, sex packaging. So, you know, like the Jurex <laughs> stuff that you get in the... It's, they are similar colours, aren't they? <laughs> it, it, it's Ostomy Supplies in sex shop packaging. <laughs> <laughs> Can't always guarantee and it can't always guarantee it says what it does on the tin. <laughs> One size fits all. <laughs> oh, do you know what? The only thing that I think that Trio have really nailed it with is their um gelin sachets. Oh, you know what? I've got loads yeah. of them oh, in my drawer and I've never ever used them. Are those it's... what are those now? Are those the um barrier rings? Barrier rings, yeah. They not the barrier fair. rings, base plate extenders. Base well, didn't plate. they do the Hang on, two um, seconds. On the trio, do they, the, the pearls, diamonds and pearls. Pearls. Yeah. Yeah, pearls, isn't it? Yeah. And, and so another company does the diamonds, but I've never, ever used them, you know. 
can't remember. I've got some of both, I think. I had a sample of one and get it's magic because you never throw anything away. I've got like a drawer of stuff that I've never used and probably would never use, but it's not they're not going in the bin. Uh-uh. No, no, no. No. But they're my boomerangs they, aren't they? Every day on my bag. They're really, really thin. They don't really help protect from leaks. If something's going through your bag, it's going through this as well. It's not great for that, but it just keeps the edge of my bag stuck down. Because you know how you get the little bits. Raising don't, up. Don't you find those a bit faffy to put on though because of how thin they are? No, because you sent you take one bit off at a time. Yeah, front and you the back there. You take the front two bits off. Ooh. Ooh. Stick it down. <laughs> <laughs> you take it hard so you can just put it round and, and what's it on? And then you take these bits off and it just leaves that really thin layer. Like I say, it just sticks my bag down. Because I've found the only problem I've got with these new salts bags is when you do get a little bit of lifting, the glue tends to go hard and like bits of fluff get stuck to it while I'm a picker. So I stick picking at the, the bits of glue and then it irritates my skin. So I just pop these on. But if I'm going swimming or anything, I had a real problem. I was using the Brava. Oh, do you, do you know what? Rachel gave me a really good tip for swimming. If you're going swimming, she said to do the bag the night before, you put the base plate extenders on, but also use an extra set. So as well as using ones just around the outside of the stoma site, to so use them around the edge and make sure that you've given them like, like a good sort of 10 hours wearing before you go swimming. She said it stops the bag from lifting. I've never had a problem, to be fair, especially if I've used the Brava tape. But using that stuff every day was making my skin red raw. So I only use that if I'm actually doing something where I think I need the extra protection. protection yeah. yeah, I use mine if my skin. I use mine if the skin's got bad. I use them if I go swimming, but I also use them when I go when I go on my little hikes. You know, I like to go on my little seven or eight yeah, mile hikes. I use them. Then. Sometimes I put them on when I go to the gym just for a bit of extra security and it just. Or if I'm going out for the day with the kids, like a day out, out. Obviously, I'll take supplies, but I really don't want to be stressing that it's going to leak. So, you see, because I use obviously I use the Pelican, the, the contour ones that go with my bag, but I don't actually use them on the outside because I found with the Pelican bags, if the base plate does pop up, it's so easy just to put back down and it sticks back down. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know because Steve, I think you used them at one point, didn't you? Yeah. And you, they do. If it pops up, you just put it back down. It sticks. It sticks straight back down. Uh -huh. So I always use them just around the stoma site because when where mine lives is where I've got the dip. So I always use them just just underneath. But I just wish that they did them in the vitamin E range. So if you are watching, <laughs> if you do them in, with the with the vitamin E, I'd be ever so happy. <laughs> um, we have well, I only have a sample of the salts ones as well, and they're quite handy for. Um, they're smaller. You have to have three of those to go around your bag. Um, I, I did try them. Call they a knife stick. Yeah, I find them really handy. Do you know if you've just got, like, I put a bag on the other day and I just had a bit in the bottom corner that was just lifting up a bit and being a bit, and I was like, oh, but I didn't want to take the whole bag off just for that corner. So I just stuck that on over that bit because they're smaller. Mm. You can just sort of do a bit of a like patch job on it. Puncture repair. Yeah. Pu so puncture repair kit. On, and then that was. And I mean, yeah. So they work really well, but I think for using every day, because you have to use three, I just thought <coughs> I'm using them, so I'll just use those ones. Right. I know, because you feel like you're getting a bit wasteful, don't you, and that you're using too much if you're using them all the time. Yeah. And the thing is, they're not always kind to the skin either, to be fair. I think I think, I think, think sometimes the base plate extenders are more so yeah. the reason for skin stripping than the actual, yeah. <laughs> and the the actual bag definitely cause that with me but they are like i say brilliant for when you need them um, um i mean so what do you guys think as a whole do you think for those that need to use the barriers do you think if 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 you've got documented skin problems right so say like me with the um constant red ring on one side and the contact dermatitis i think using the barriers keeps it at bay um i mean i'm not wasteful with my products i'll have to admit i did have a stash of the brava powder so i will not be all doing that for a long time i've come across three bottles um, does so your vitamin e help with that though the vitamin e does help but the thing is even though i've got the contact dermatitis on the skin which is around the base plate so not the actual not the actual ileostomy but the base plate that's helped with that 
but yeah. it can't always help with the fact that I've got high output and that it's eating the base plate. Right, right. So the only bit that I have got the issues bit is directly around the ileostomy. The actual stoma, yeah. Yeah, but it keeps it keeps my stoma site, the rest of the skin healthy. So that's why I, that's why I use it. And I'd be I'd be worried. I think I'd be worried more so if the powder was removed because I think I can cope without the barrier cream and the vitamin E bags. But I don't think I'd be able to cope without the powder because the powder is the main reason as to why the actual convex sticks to my skin and sticks to it. Because if I didn't use it, then this this that part of the site would still be wet, so I would be getting continual leaks. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's sorry, trial and error, isn't it? You know, about... you've just got to. Sorry. It's all right. Go on. You you got to just you got to trial and error. You got to find the one that suits you. It's not just it's not just how how it works as well. It's whether it actually affects your skin because they're all glue glues, aren't they? And you know. I mean, I, I, I found so many problems with different bags to start off with. So, mm -hmm. And the bags were brilliant, but I was getting rash. I was getting sore rashes. I was getting rashes where, where they weren't sore. They just looked unsightly, you know. And it took a while to get the bag that I needed. And I used that bag for, like, months and months. And then, and then it changed again. So it's just, it's just trial and error, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. A lot but of but once you find something that works, you've got to stick with it, I think, for mm -hmm. a bit. Yeah. And I people suggest like calamine lotion if your skin's sore. And another one I've seen, a bit different, but it's putting baby oil in your bag for lubrication. Really? But I can't use either of those. I put calamine lotion on my skin once when it was sore, and my bag just went whoop. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the, chalky, isn't it? Isn't the baby oil just purely for pancaking, though? Why would you put a baby oil around? The no, 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 baby oil for pancake. <laughs> nah. Can leak. Yeah, no. Obviously, pancaking make obviously pancaking makes you leak. But yeah, you know, I thought you meant baby oil around the skin. It's like no, the bag's oh, yeah, not, not gonna stick. Just that in your bag to help with. But it was just another example of something that you sort of. I mean, what should I do? Because I normally have obviously for those of you watching and for you guys, um, Nat's read a post that I have got going up, and I know that we are covering reasons for stomas and what uh, stomas and what can cause bag leaks next week. Nat, you know I normally put the post up on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Should I post it up next Thursday with conjunction to the show? I'm not too sure to be fair. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Because we are covering like what causes stoma leaks and that next week, so um, I, I might put it up. I'll see if I can amend the schedules. Oh, god, I've got good. Or put it up on Monday and we can all share it and we can share it on the show page on Thursday and things to make sure that people have read it before the show. Okay, I'll I'll um, I'll rejig because I had a different post going up Monday. Um, I'll let somebody else know, but um, I'll rejig that for the following week. Yeah. Um, what else? Right, so we've. Do you know what? I didn't think well, last I week. I wanted to mention as well, sorry. Um, um, just about your skin as well. Um, bag free showers. I pretty much, because I change my bag every day, um, otherwise my skin gets quite irritated. Um, but I pretty much 95% of the time will take off my bag and shower. And that's another great thing for the skin, just to give it some bag free time. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Graham just sent me something about pancaking and what is it if you can't toss it um uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh another tip as well sun cream so sun cream after sun just general moisturizer don't go near the near your stoma bag with it give it a good wide berth of about four inches either side and if you are washing it off scrub because i've had incidences where i've used sun cream because i've worn a bikini and I've actually woken up, I've had a shower, washed the sun cream off, put after sun on, even though I changed my bag, but I still had residue on the skin. And I actually woke up on holiday and because of the way I was sleeping, you know, you automatically, when you wake up, you have to sleep, you always put your your hand on your stomach, don't you? It's automatic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a safety blanket. You have a good old feel. Yeah, I've got bare stoma in my hand. The bag had slid off and was <laughs> somewhere wrapped up in the bed clothes. And I had a free stoma, and I don't know how long the stoma would be free for. But, um, oh, God, the issues I had trying to get a bag stuck back on. I had to have a shower and use use like a, like a scrub to scrub the skin off to then be able to put the bag back on because of the uh, moisturising oils in the um, in the stuff. Oh, yeah, other one. Don't use uh, baby wipes. Baby wipes are bad. 
Oh, I use baby wipes. What baby wipes do you use? But I suggest like using gentle ones. But I do use them and they've never caused a problem. Okay, maybe it's because I've been <laughs> using the Johnsons and Johnsons and I, they've got, I think they've got a bit of baby if you they're moisturized yeah. ones yeah going so back the aldi ones going back i think it's nothing better than having a shower without your bag on mm -hmm. it's fantastic isn't it you know um i think you feel properly clean then don't you yeah if i could but, do but, that but, oh, i would but uh you know i mean and my my stone was really good in the early days it wasn't in the early days my toes used to get a battering as i'm drying myself but you know now nowadays it's kind of like it knows its place it's i just going, have okay. a dry wipe so as soon as i get out i have a dry wipe on the side and i like wrap yeah so, same and it's and a I routine like, isn't it you got one head. dry wipe on the side and yeah. a bag ready to go in the, in the back Steve, just because yeah. you're the big boss on this and just to confirm because i i vaguely remember seeing a post but i thought I'd check with you you know the bag that you have been using yes that's now been made public hasn't it um I'm, i don't uh, it's 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 out there but i haven't been i haven't been given any uh any oh because I've got, yet, people, so. I've got people asking questions about it and they're saying yeah. has anyone seen the new star shape meo base plate <clears throat> i can't really say much yet myself i can't wait to to be fair but um I'm going to keep Stom at the minute. Yeah. Okay. At the moment, for those of you watching that are curious about that, I would advise you to go straight to the Colour Fast website and have a look on there because at the moment, I can't really confirm as to whether or not Steve's allowed to talk about it. And yeah, I mean, because there's been, it's been so. an article in the IA. Yeah, yeah I was going to say it's in and, the magazine, wasn't and it? And I've seen that, but, but you know, I've looked on the Colour Fast website and there's nothing as of yet. There you go. You've heard it from the best boss man. For those of you that are curious, go to IA. They might have it on the website, but I know they also have it in the in their brochure. So have a look on there. But at the moment, it can't. We can't confirm as to what it is. I'll be getting strict instructions, and then I'll be jumping about. <laughs> okay, we've overrun. Do you know what? I didn't think we could talk about barrier creams wipes. Yeah, we haven't overrun. It's it's a, That's it's six minutes to nine. We haven't so, overrun. Um, if, if, we go. If we do overrun slightly, right, so stoma blockages. When you first have your ileostomy formation, oh, God, I'm sounding like a school teacher now. Um, okay. When you first had your ileostomy um, formation, they'll tell you after your surgery you can eat anything. Now, I would advise, I've done a blog for Talk Health with regards to this. Proceed with caution is all I can tell you. Um, your your ileostomy, because of the way it functions and because of what it is, it doesn't process food the way that your colon would. It doesn't have as long to go through. So it's pretty much dumping half digested out of your stomach through your small intestine and then out into your bag, dependent on how long that track is. So it's normally advised for six to eight weeks after surgery to follow a low residue diet, then start introducing other foods and proceed with caution. But there is still stuff as a whole, if dependent on the type of operation you've got or what sort of disease you've got, if you've got scarring, you've got strictures, you've got narrowing of the bowel, which is common in patients with what more so with Crohn's and IBD than UC. However, UC patients can still get scarring. It's not unheard of. It has happened. So there, there, there's, there is a reason why there's a list of foods that should typically be avoided. So things like bean sprouts. <laughs> Um, oh, they're the devil. Sweet corn. Thing is, they're so taste. Sweet corn is fun. No, that's evil stuff. I don't like sweet corn. Pretty much I like sweet corn, but it's pretty much. I could, I could have a, I could have a Sunday dinner, and three hours later, I'm I'm playing with peas. You know what I mean? I do that. I'm okay with peas. I just can't do. <laughs> Do you know what? I can't have peas. Last time I had peas, I had a partial blockage, so I just don't need it. But the thing is, I, I, you know what the worst thing about it is, right? I don't chew them on purpose now. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> I really don't. It's like, I think, like, no. It's even, even to the point as if I'm having an orange, yeah, I try and swallow a few pips <laughs> on, on purpose. I think, I think, oh, we'll see them later. And I almost sort of, I almost sort of work it out how long it's took okay. to go through. 
Paula had a Paula had a blockage and she said rice had caused it. I think the best advice I can give about rice is you know the Uncle Ben's microwave packs. Just go back to them rather than boiling the rice up because you can guarantee that is going to be cooked through. Okay, I know it's a bit shading and you've got to put it in the microwave or heat it up in a pot, but that's pretty much the only way that you're going to guarantee that the rice is completely cooked unless you're a chef. <laughs> I, th I think it's more about like like the nuts thing. You know, the way I look at it is like um. A, a sink you know like a, a cistern on a sink yeah and the water goes down it goes around the bend if you put rice down there if you keep putting rice down there it's going to block you put rice you put water you put rice you put water it's going to go through and that's what happened with my nuts when i when i ate handful after handful of nuts you know on the way back from asda and uh and, and i just you know i ate a whole bag of nuts and it wasn't one of the right. ones either. For those of you watching, if you see Steve posting about another partial blockage, just put nuts underneath it. <laughs> no, I'm nuts. good with nuts now. Oh, I'm good with them. Because we're... talking about his nuts. <laughs> that just made me giggle. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm put, up, put my foot in it again. Oh, dear. But no, I think it's more about mindful eating. So typical things that you're meant to avoid with an ileostomy are things with skins, things that are high in fibre that your body takes longer to digest, which you can't with an ileostomy because you've got a pretty short track. Um, so things like grapes. Don't eat grapes. So if you are going to eat grapes, take the skins off. I've had a blockage because I decided to sit down and eat a whole planet of grapes. And I actually had to go into hospital and have a balloon dilation through my stoma into the bowel to clear the blockage because i didn't know then that's how they found out i had strictures <laughs> really yeah because i tried to eat i ate a whole punnet of grapes too you have to be careful because obviously they're just like shrunken mm. grapes aren't they but the skin on them is quite tough what's that cherries and you know what the work one Wait. of the worst bits as well was and that was shredded wheat it's a danger oh. it, it, well, it's really because it because i do like it it's, it's really stringy and well, I struggle with more, like I can eat peas, but I can, I struggle more with beans. Do you know, like green beans? Okay. See, ones and like celery and... Green beans I'm fine with. I can eat spinach. I've been risky a couple of times and I've tried cabbage. Oh, well, I want green savoy cabbage and kale. Yeah, cabbage. That hasn't backfired on me yet. However, you know, I've been doing all the healthy eating and the recipes. I had a burrito. You know, I can't eat peppers and a lot of stuff that I've been taking out of the out of it to stoma proof it because I have strictures. I, I thought, I know what I do. I've been fine with chickpeas. I'll have a tin of kid, red kidney beans in it. Oh. oh, my good God. I tell you what, if you want something to slow down your stoma output, red kidney beans are the way to go. By the way, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not saying eat a tin of red kidney beans. But, <laughs> oh, God, the pain. Mm -hmm. Three days in total it took to pass, and it's really weird. Is it normal to feel a blockage on the right hand side, or even a partial blockage on the right hand side? Because it seemed to be on the all right. All my hand blockages I felt on the right hand side, you know. But then again, that's where my, my stoma is. So surely that's where it's going to be, isn't well, it? If it's further along, it will be nearer to your stoma. Right hand side would be normal, wouldn't it? I feel a lot sort of right near my stoma. Mine's sort of central. The to tummy my... goes hard, doesn't it? Mm. It's, it's not. A, it's not a nice feeling, is it? Let's face it. Well, but I eat all the time, and don't. I mean, they come out sometimes whole. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm fine. The plate with They slip about, and they you can't get a grip on them things. Oh god! We <laughs> <laughs> grow. That's so a you know what? The, the one, the, the one way, thing I have chopped. I've chopped it up small. I've tried every way possible, and I still can't eat mushrooms. If I eat mushrooms, I'm throwing my guts up the following morning, bringing up the mushrooms that have been sitting in the bottom of my stomach. You have an issue with mushrooms, I think. I have an issue with mushrooms. I don't. I should leave them. Well, uh, I love mushrooms. I do. <laughs> but, uh, but then again, I'm a fun guy. <laughs> my surgery, but I think. I think with, with with anything, I think it's just more about being mindful. So the disc, the uh, old old age disclaimer of choo 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 choo, and if you're still not sure, choo again. <laughs> yeah, just start off small. I mean, they say all these things, but like we've just shown, all three of us can and do eat different things absolutely. Yeah. Fine. So it's just about trying them yourself when you're not 
as soon as you've had a stoma, I think you need to give it time to settle down as well. And then start trying these things in little amounts, drink lots, chew lots, and see how you get on with them. I think in all honesty, it's normally anything. I know they say the healing period for ureliostomy is 12 weeks, but it's anything between 6 to 12 months, isn't it, for everything to completely to start yeah. down. Yeah. trying these risky foods that they do suggest you don't eat, I think you should leave it that bit longer, yeah. But, but I... You know, everybody's different. It's like Steve is kamikaze and he'll just eat anything and then go, ah, shit, later. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've learnt my lesson. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love Chinese food, but I've got to, I've really got to watch bean sprouts because I was in trouble with them. It's Steve, not just they're that. not Even, digestible at all. Yeah, yeah, but you know, like when, when, I mean, it's a bit gross, but when they were, when they actually, <laughs> when they actually shift, shifted the, the blockage itself, it took ages to shift, and and th there was like exactly the same as they went in. Mm -hmm. It's not like um like nuts nuts. I sneezed and my bag filled, and I felt like aliens. Where you know the alien had just exited the stomach, whereas the bean sprouts they they just clung on. They were going no, we're not going nowhere. They're horrible. Just out of curiosity, somebody has just asked me a quick question, and. They've asked just uh, just a thought of the people that got both an ileostomy and a colostomy together, how do they cope? But I think in most cases, nine times out of ten, one of them is actually defunction, doesn't it? Yeah, I think if you've got both, well, one of the them ile would take would... over the colostomy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise, you'd be hard. I think yeah. the, the, the best one to, argue, to, to maybe answer that question would be Val if Val is watching or if Val is about, because I know Val has both an ileostomy and a colostomy. Because would it be like a loop ileostomy? Oh, I'm not too sure, lovely. I think, it, I think it possibly would, you know, but that's just a guess. I don't know, though. Yeah. Can I just show off my top? I won it. I made, um, if you know, the toilet me and I bid you page, they, um, they ran a little thing and... James is the owner, creator of the page, and he asked people to make some donations. So everybody was donating to CC UK. So I put one on there, and then um, I won. So look, hey. yay! Check you out. I'm wearing my penguin bottoms from Fat Face. <laughs> I've got my pajamas on underneath. Don't worry. But I just wanted to show it off and say thank you, James. I really love it. And then. Um, yeah, I think I think more so with an ileostomy, I think it's just knowing your own body more than anything else. But, you know, if you're eating something and you think it is going to cause a blockage, then I would say don't eat it. <laughs> because, you know, but then the saying that there's other things that can cause flushing of the stoma and other bits and pieces, so things like stilton, dairy, you know. It's all individual to the person. Everybody's different and you can't say, well, you know, I've got loads of people on here tonight that have got an ileostomy. They said they eat everything. So am yeah. I just am I just am I just being a little scaredy cat and just not trying things because? Who, yeah, I mean, who knows whether you just you just like mushrooms? I don't think that's got anything to do with your stoma, is it? You just don't go along with them. But I used to be and able to eat them long before. Really, <clears throat> that could be just a. a um, Oh, what's the word? I'm I think it's just my body's defence mechanism. It's like with tequila. It won't let me drink tequila anymore. It's definitely not since my stoma formation, but that might have been because that one time I almost died. Uh, <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, it is just, I think it's just being a bad mindful. I think more than anything else, you know, everybody can try different things. And if you're like me and you've got strictures and stuff, then I would say err on the, more on the side of caution. But they're saying that there's stuff that I, that I eat that other ostomates wouldn't touch. So it's a difficult one. Yeah. So we have our run. Um, Rachel is still in hospital. She's currently messaging and saying that she's watching the show. Um, just bear in mind that Rachel does need a break. Um, just message her. If she's well enough, she'll reply. If not, then she won't. But just be mindful that sometimes we're, we're, we're ill as well as you guys are so rachel's more a bit more poorly than what we are so just just bear, bear that in mind if she's about online she'll talk to you if she's not then she's on online sabbatical <laughs> but um we're hoping she gets better i think they've pinpointed some of it now but not all of it um what else 
Uh, Steffi um, has also been in the hospital. I know she's out now, isn't she? Um, she was in with a tummy... She was in... Was it a tummy bug? It ended up being gastroenteritis, yeah. They thought it was... Um... Well, I don't think they really knew what it was at first, but they've ended well, up putting it down to gastroenteritis. That's what they've suggested for Rachel as well. But they've said, oh, no, yeah, she was telling me. It's kind of like they're clutching at straws a bit, I think. Like, yeah, they, I mean, I suppose at least they rule everything else out. There's no blockages, there's no this, there's no that. But um, I think it's just like, oh, it must have been a bug. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, well, hurry up back, girls. Yeah, okay, so what we're covering next week, right? Next week we are covering stoma leaks. What could cause a stoma leak and how to deal with a stoma leak? Um, I think we are also doing what are the other um oh we do do any of you guys use gelling agents or have you used gelling agents? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want about like like in within in the bag to thicken. Yeah, gelling uh, agents in the bag. Never. I've got them, but I've never used them. Okay, no, because week ah uh, you should try them this week and then he can tell us all about it yeah try them do. steve on yeah, the night yeah, time okay. Stick yeah there. i will do whatever ones you've got let me know what ones you've got because i'll, I'll know the instruction and <laughs> you'll you know it says right, one yeah, i'll do that Stick I've, got two. Like, I've got diamonds the pearls i've got uh i think i've got a cut of about three or four i'm sure i have yeah, i'll try them and, and we'll get, I'm get going, back to you i'm going through the box of the uh pelican ones at the moment but um, I normally have to put like three in, into into the bag to sort of deal with my output overnight. Um, That's but, what I was going to ask. How many would you put in? Um, if you're using the trio ostomy pearls, depending on how watery your output is. If your output's like porridge, then only use one. If it's more watery overnight, I'd use two. Mm -hmm. But make sure you okay. empty your bag before you go to bed. And when you put the pearls in, make sure that you, you pat out the air because um, yeah. they, they make your bag blow up. <laughs> Do they? Yeah, it's a bit like an air balloon in the mornings. Um, so, yeah, we are doing gelling agents next week, uh, covering stoma leaks, possibilities of what could cause a stoma leak, along with um, how to deal with the aftermath of the leak, more so because we've all been there. <laughs> and um, Next week. I know we sort of briefly touched on them, but to help. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll cover the um, la, 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 da, 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 flange extenders. Not flange yeah. extenders. Don't say that word. Flange no. extenders. I can't believe I just said it. Don't extenders of the flange. Not my ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's such a dirty word. Horrible word. It depends if anybody actually knows what that stands for. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, okay, oh, we're all going to say. Nice thing I think of when I hear it. Yeah, we're uh, we're starting to lower the tone. Um, <laughs> we will go for this evening and say thank you ever so much for watching. If any of you have any questions with regards to the stuff that we are using, if you like what Nat's using, if you contact Nat over at the Spoonie Mummy, either Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, you might even be able to contact her on Pinterest. But none of us know how to use it. Um, <laughs> um, if you mean. I love Pinterest and I pin things. All yeah, and no, I do. I do as well. Um, <laughs> if you're interested in what I'm, what I use, um, if you message me over at Crohn's Fighting on the same platforms, just send me a private message and I can let you know the product codes for the stuff that I have got because I do have them um, along with how to request samples. Um, if you like anything that Steve's using, don't pester him about anything because we don't know yet, <laughs> and he's he he can't get into trouble because he's our lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so um we will say bye oh, for watch tonight. this space uh, say again steve is on instagram isn't he yeah, yeah. he's under bag daddy i don't have a clue how to use it there no I i'm him. on everything no. I'm, I'm on stuff that i don't even know how to spell it <laughs> Oh dear God. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll say good night for tonight. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um we will be back again next week, no doubt with some more more fun and shenanigans for whatever we've been up to. And I cannot believe that we managed to talk about barrier protection and barrier creams and anything barrier for nearly a bleeding hour. I know. Check us out. Woo woo. That's at this woop woop. Anyway, we're saying night. Thank you for watching. We're saying bye. 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 Oh, God, I did the cheesy wave again. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>